Uh, hi everyone, welcome on today's CI team uh, functional group update. It's kind of special one because this is the, the like the last one before the summit. Uh, so it will be very very brief, uh, but actually packed with a bunch of things that we did and we plan to do uh, in the upcoming weeks. So uh, first of all, we discuss collaboratively with uh, Gitari team uh, with. Uh, Stan and, and a bunch of other people on reinforcing Gitari team because like Gitari team has a lot of impact on the performance of various parts of GitLab. And we came to the conclusion that Ziger would be great addition because of his uh, very good Go knowledge and also uh, the GitLab race knowledge where he can like help with uh, refactoring of different uh, parts of uh, GitLab code base. So, sorry. So Gitani uh, team was enforced with Zigger, uh, starting with uh, this release, so basically the uh, 9th of uh, October. Thank you, Zigger, very much for all your work uh, in the CICD team. We made basically a bunch of very uh, of great features. We work on the Mattermost, we work on a lot of these backstage uh, and performance improvements. We work on including usage pings and uh, a lot of different other uh, things. So thank you again uh, for your work and uh, bring a lot of to uh, the backstage performance of uh, GitHub. So, but this is this is Ziger. Uh, it is definitely uh, something that uh, makes it slightly harder for us temporarily. But we actually opened two CICD positions, backend developer and senior developer, and we effectively look for a, for a few people, not only these two. Uh, but maybe more about the hiring slightly later. So as for the accomplishments, um, comparing that to 10.0, if you would click the link of the presentation from last release, we had basically way more mergers and way more issues crossed. But 10.1 was basically very focused on having Kubernetes uh, out of the door, Kubernetes GKE integration out of the door. So the first iteration of allowing you to create the GKE cluster, uh, but also a lot of uh, different performance and backstage improvements. Because we improve uh, paginated registry, we improve deploy boards, we improve jobs controller. We also uh, introduce some functions that we'll be using later for allowing you to see any information about each step of a job and the performance of each step. Uh, but also we uh, fixed out of DevOps and the banner that was very intrusive today, uh, sorry, yesterday basically, today it's a non-intrusive one. This is still not part of 10.1 because uh, I think it should be part of RC2 if I'm correct. Philippa can uh, correct that one. Uh, but also we uh, fixed a bunch of uh, different bugs and improved the CE and E job uh, testing times. So, mm, but as always, not everything goes right. So as for log lights, uh, monitoring is progressing, but slowly, uh, a little more about monitoring later. Mm, and there are some things that slipped. Uh, I, the maybe most important ones is basically the uh, artifacts one, because we had an idea of extending the current design of artifacts, but also uh, actually with introducing with that, with the concept of multiple artifacts per bit and force us basically to uh, introduce some scalability changes along that story. Uh, but we didn't manage to um, uh, finish that in 10.1. Uh, and we basically kind of assume that auto uploads should be better to be done after multiple artifacts per build. But it was kind of uh, virtual blocking where we could basically finish auto upload without waiting for multiple artifacts per build to happen. So this is like slightly a low light from the planning perspective and uh, how we decided to do things because like in terms of the artifacts, we could basically deliver half of that story, but we um, try to like have the, the full uh, story covered 
uh, instead of like trying to do that iterations. From the performance point of view, um, we did merge the migrations, we did that run, but basically we discovered that we did not fully migrate all stages. Uh, we did not migrate the stages that were for uh, external integrations, in this case, uh, Jenkins integration. So it kind of forced us to, to not basically remove the legacy code for stages. So the pipelines index list didn't receive the, the improvement that we planned to have uh, in 10.1. Mm. If we talk about 10.2, uh, the direction is basically we are following our GKE story. Uh, the, the, like the, there are maybe two main parts of the GKE story. Uh, is like the first one is that we, we want to allow to install uh, apps easily into Kubernetes cluster. Right now, these apps will be basically hand tiller and ingress uh, that allows you to have automated load balancing. But afterwards, we will basically work on enabling more apps, uh, in this case, Prometheus, uh, also a GitLab runner. And the second one is, my, is more like this clean, kind of cleanup and my Kubernetes basically the top level uh, part of GitLab because we want to uh, move from Kubernetes integration to be part of the integrations page where it's hidden very deeply uh, to make it basically first class. So if you go today to gitlab.com, you will see under CICD, the new option cluster. Today you can only create GKE cluster, but tomorrow you will be actually be able to add there your existing Kubernetes cluster and start using everything that we plan as part of directions. In terms of scalability, security, and improvements, we are basically mostly following the stories that we started uh, last release, um, hopefully finishing them. Uh, for the biggest support runner issue, uh, we want to uh, basically merge the persistent connection closed fixes that uh, we started testing some time ago. Uh, that should basically help with the mm, resilience of GitLab runner and scheduling builds on Docker. So um, see on GitLab.com, this is always quite big part of my uh, functional group update because uh, we are also responsible of making sure that uh, it is stable because this is used by the company, but also by our customers. Uh, as like basically for the first, past few months, Bitcoin miners are continuing to be paying, but like it seems that we kind of managed to uh, not be impacted by them. Uh, at this, we, we don't see any impact other than like maybe increased cost for a limited period of time. And this is basically like from, uh, we kind of managed to figure out what we have to do, what we have to uh, verify, how we should block them and how we should prevent them from abusing. This works today and thanks Brian for helping basically with that on like daily, daily basis. So this is more like a joint effort between CICD, CICD team and security team. Mm, from the other minor changes, we are slowly migrating our GitHub ink runners to separate accounts. The main reason for that is basically to be, uh, to make it easier for us to be aware of the cost and split the um, monitoring of shared runners that are used by the customers uh, and split the monitoring of GitLab ink runners that are used only by us. Mm, we are quite nicely progressing with end-to-end -end monitoring uh, because we uh, basically last week we enabled console and Prometheus, but we had some problems with amount of the metrics uh, that we were scraping because it turns out that the machines that we choose for Prometheus uh, were not able to process everything and they were scraping from the machines because we create a lot of dynamic machines that are then removed. So in the end, we have a lot of metrics stored in the memory, in the memory which kind of makes it really tough to uh, Prometheus. So uh, there are a few improvements that we are right now working on. Uh, first, we only scrape the important ones. But the second, we, we actually make machines to uh, properly uh, disconnect from console uh, service discovery. The other story that we are kind of following is the object storage migration uh, on github.com. We migrated uh, over 25 terabytes of data so far. It seems to be like a 
around half of, of how, how much we store today. So it is quite nice progress. Mm, we are right now in the process of doing basically cross check before we proceed further, because the next migration will be basically that we migrate everything up to now. Uh, so we would basically store uh, everything on the object storage. We see a uh, new artifacts landing in the uh, local storage, but since we are working on the improvement subject storage to auto upload them, this will be also stored with the next uh, release. Uh, there is also something else that we introduce. Oh my God, the table that broke. So uh, maybe I will, it should be visible here if I would fix it like that. Okay, it should be much better. So uh, yesterday we enabled high CPU droplets uh, for CE and EE testing, which kind of gave a very nice boost for our, our our pipelines. What is important, we enable that for all CE and EE uh, jobs. Uh, so on GitLab.com and on DevGitLab, but also for forks. So it is something that is basically visible system-wide. But what is actually the outcome is that we see that the workload time of the jobs are basically, in most cases, it seems that are, they are around twice faster than now. The total time seems to, to improve something like 30%, 25-35%. But what is more important is the stability. Uh, if you look at the results of past few commits, you see that the va variance of the testing times is, is much more predictable, something that was not uh, true previously. It is mostly because of the, the CPU steal time, something that with the high CPU droplets, we have uh, less likely to hit because of the nice, uh, noisy nightboards on uh, virtual machines, uh, actually on the hypervisors hosting virtual machines. So if you please uh, let us know how, how it is working, if you see any problems with this change, because we enable that system-wide, uh, but we are still not like 100% sure that it will be fully stable all the time. So if you see something strange, uh, Please let us know as soon as possible. The next thing is uh, UGC Al Summit, uh, something that I want you to invite. Mm, I will be organizing session for discussion about how we should, what we should change, how we should scale CI to run next 100 uh, million jobs at GitLab.com. So basically, if, like from my perspective, it seems that this is something that we should uh, hit in one or two years from now. It's, it's somewhere between this time. So this still give us a little of the time to plan everything ahead. But like there is so many different areas to cover and that like any, anyone that could uh, jump in help or maybe listen to how the current architecture of the CI looks like, uh, I would be very glad to host you. So uh, under the drink, there is a Google Doc. And this Google Doc is basically like, uh, maybe something to start with uh, because I, I kind of describe it how I kind of plan this session to look like. It is still not final, uh, but if you have some ideas uh, beforehand, before the session starts, please write the topics. I will be happily uh, try to uh, introduce them in this light, lighting talk session that I plan to do in the first 15 minutes. Uh, the next thing, uh, is of course hiring. So if you know any good developers one that wants to join GitLab, if you know someone that is very, it's great in the Go, in the Kubernetes, but also someone that is basically great in the race and is passionate about tech tools, please shout out, give them know that we are looking for, for a great people that could join GitLab. Uh, and, or, and also let me know uh, too. I saw that there are a bunch of questions, so let's move to the questions. Uh, it's correct, nice, high CPU droplets. Magic the gathering room. Uh, yes, I think so. Okay, mm, so thank you very much for attending. Uh, See you at UGC.
uh, and see you on the summit on in two days from now. Thank you very much. See you on the team call.